Good day, students. You are welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Physics for Everybody. Today, we are going to be solving past IGCSE questions on work, energy, and power. And one very important principle upon which um, this topic lies is the law of conservation of energy. That is the most important principle when you are dealing with the topic work, energy, and power. Now, according to the law of conservation of energy, you know, energy cannot be created, energy cannot be destroyed, but can be converted or transformed from one form to another. So that is one law upon which this topic rests, the law of conservation of energy. Let's go straight into solving questions on this topic. Question number one. A skier walks from the bottom of a ski rope to the top and gains 10,000 joules of gravitational potential energy. She skis down the slope. At the bottom of the slope, her kinetic energy is 2,000 joules. How much energy is dissipated in overcome friction and air resistance as a skier moves down the slope? Looking at this question, a skier walks from the bottom Let's assume this is the bottom, okay? And then she walks to the top. Yes, she walks to the top and gains 10,000 joules of gravitational potential energy. That means um, this is the top. And at this point, she has 10,000 joules of gravitational potential energy. Good. This 10,000 joules of gravitational potential energy at the top. And now, after that, what happens? What does she do? She, she skis down the slope. Now, she's skiing down the slope this way. And at the bottom of the slope, that is at this point down here, her kinetic energy is 2,000 joules. So she has just 2,000 joules. You know, according to the law of conservation of energy, the energy at the beginning should be equal to the energy at the end. That means the energy at this point, which is at the top, should be equal to the energy at the bottom of the slope. Okay? But some energy will be used, some energy will be wasted along the line in overcoming friction and air resistance. Now, according to the law of conservation of energy, that means um, energy in the beginning which is gravitational potential energy, must be equal to energy at the end, which is the kinetic energy, plus the wasted energy. Plus the wasted energy. That is what we have according to the law of conservation of energy. And if you draw the energy diagram or the Sankey diagram, it will look like this. So some energy will be wasted while the rest will emerge as the kinetic energy. This is the kinetic energy. This is the wasted energy that is used to overcome air resistance and friction. Why this is the gravitational potential energy at the beginning, in the beginning? So what you are looking for now, we are looking for what amount of energy is wasted. We have gravitational potential energy at the beginning as 10,000 joules. We have the kinetic energy at the end as 2,000 joules so what kind of what amount of energy is wasted wasted that is what we're going to solve right now okay so let me just erase all of these unnecessary part of the question and solve the main problem so the kinetic energy at the beginning equals sorry gravitational potential energy equals to kinetic energy plus wasted energy what is the gravitational potential energy the gravitational potential energy is 10,000 joules. So I write here 10,000 10, equal to kinetic energy is 2,000 joules. 2,000 plus wasted energy. Wasted energy is what we are looking for. Okay, so to get the value of wasted energy, I'll just move 2,000 to the left hand side and it becomes minus. Okay, hence I can write. 10,000 
minus 2000 will give me the value of the wasted energy. 10,000 minus 2,000, that gives 8,000 joules. Okay, that means the wasted energy is 2,000 joules. Okay, you may express it like this. You just write wasted energy is equal to 8,000 joules. When you say wasted energy, we mean the amount of energy that is used to overcome friction. Okay. In overcoming friction and air resistance and the value is 8000 joules so correct answer to number one is b so you should be okay with your um, black pen or whichever color of pen you're using question number two a coal fired power station generates electricity the coal is burned and the energy is released and the energy released is used to boil water the steam from the water makes the generator to move and this produces electricity which words are used to describe the energy stored in the coal and energy of moving generator you see moving generator you know automatically that's kinetic energy energy stored in coal you know that is that is what energy stored in coal what form of energy is stored in coal chemical energy yeah energy stored in fuel all fuels is chemical energy why energy stored in moving objects? Energy possessed by moving objects is kinetic energy. That means option B is the correct answer. Okay, for coal we have chemical energy, and for moving um, uh, for moving generator, the generator parts of the generator that are in motion possess kinetic energy. Question three: Four different children run up the same set of stairs. For which child? Is a useful power to climb the stair the greatest? Mass of child in kilogram, and we have time in seconds. Do not forget that the formula for um, gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh, right? And then um, power is equal to the energy, in this case, the energy is gravitational potential energy. Energy divided by time. Okay. And they are looking for when power is greatest. Power is greatest when the numerator was, that's when gravitational potential energy is high. Okay. And when the time is low. Yes. When the numerator is high and the denominator is low, then the value of the fraction will be high. So we want the gravitational potential energy to be high and we want the time to be low. So let's look for which option gives us a high, a high gravitational potential energy and low time. Okay, so this column gives us time. The column on the left gives us mass, not gravitational potential energy. But you know from the formula for gravitational potential energy, when mass is high, it means gravitational potential energy is high. So we are just looking for the one that gives us high mass high mass okay and low time that's all so when is mass high okay the highest mass is 70 kilogram okay and the lowest time is 15 second okay though this is also a low time but this mass is not high this is where we have the highest mass and lowest time that's why i'm picking option d as the correct answer okay and if you decide to solve it by calculating your gravitational potential energy by doing MGH. You know, um, if you pick 70, okay, these are correct answer. The value of the mass is 70. So if you do 70 times, G is always 10, okay, times, uh, we don't have a height, okay. If you just put H here, you get um, 700, and, you get 700 H. You get 700 h okay or, or you just you might just decide to use a value of 10 for the height okay just put value of 10 for the height and you make sure you maintain that value throughout your calculation okay so if you do this you will get 7000 joules for the energy okay so power will be your gravitational potential energy divided by time so you divide this 7000 by 15 what value will it give you 
7,000 divided by 15. 7,000 divided by 15. That gives us, that gives us 467 joules. 467 watts. Okay, now we've gotten value of our power for D. Now you can try it again for option C. Let your mass be 60 kilogram and let the time be 25. So if you solve it again with option C, you let the mass be 60 kilogram. You know, when you solve this, you get 6,000 joules as your, as your, as your power, okay? Sorry, as your gravitational potential energy. Now we've got 6,000 joules. Now you want to solve power. When you want to solve power, you divide the gravitational potential energy by the time, okay? In option C, our time is 25 seconds. So you do our gravitational potential energy, which is 6,000, divided by 25. If you divide 6,000 by 25, you will get, let's do that, 6,000 divided by 25. You get 240. You get 240. 240. Okay? And take note that when we use option D, we got 467. When we use option C, we got 240. If you try it again with option B and option A, you realize that it is the one with option D that gives us the highest value of the power. Okay? Good. So just by, yeah, just by looking at the mass, the highest mass and lowest time, we give you the highest power in watts, okay? You may pause this video and try it out. Try other option out. And you see that only option D will give you the correct answer. So that is end of that um, calculation. Let us move straight to question number four. Question four says, which energy source is one that is used to boil water to make steam in power station okay boiling water you know that requires heat right good energy from tides no that does not require heat that only requires the sun and the moon energy from waves no energy from waves is as a result of um, the the different temperatures at different and regions of the earth that causes waves okay good hydroelectric energy no that's energy from water at a certain height okay energy in the dam nuclear energy good that's one that requires heat take note that i said that for for you to boil water you need heat okay nuclear energy produces heat so that makes option d the correct answer okay because that's the only one that requires heating so you should option D, okay? Good. Let's move to the next one. Question five. In a factory, two men, X and Y, try to move identical heavy boxes, P and Q. The man X tries to push the box B along the floor. The box does not move because an object is in the way. Man Y lifts box Q from the floor onto a shelf. Which man does the most work on the box? And which box gains the most energy? You know, in order for work to be done, um, from the formula for calculating work, work is equal to force multiplied by distance. So for work to be done, the object must move a certain distance. In this case, no distance is moved because there is an obstacle that is blocking the part of the box. Since no distance is moved, no work has been done. But in the case, the second case, the objects will move by, it will cover a distance h, which is the height, okay? The object is going to be raised from ground level to this shelf, this height. So the objects will be forced to move a certain distance in the direction of the force. Hence, we say work is done. And then the distance will be the height, okay, from top to bottom. Good. So which man does the most work? The man Q does the most work. 
And which box gain most energy? The box Q also, sorry, demand Y, okay, demand is Y. Demand Y does the most work. And the box Q, the box Q gains the most energy. Why? Because it is the only box that is moving. Okay, hence that is the one that will gain energy. So that's option D. Okay, Y and Q. Let's move to the next one. Question six. Question six says, which energy source is renewable and reliably available at all times? Is it coal energy? No, coal energy is not renewable. Geothermal energy. Geothermal energy is renewable, but it is not available at all times. So it's not that. Nuclear energy. Is nuclear energy renewable? No, nuclear energy is not renewable. What about wind energy? Is wind energy renewable? Yes. Is, is, in wind, energy, is wind energy available at all times? Ah, wind energy is not available at all times. Now let us revisit our option again. Renewable. Coal energy is not renewable. Okay, let me start again. Coal energy. Coal is not renewable. Geothermal energy. Is geothermal energy renewable? Yes. Geothermal energy is, available, is renewable. Is geothermal energy available at all times? Yes. Geothermal energy is available at all times. Take note that geothermal energy is the energy due to the heated core and mantle of the earth. You know, the heated core, the core of the earth is, is hot. Okay? Yeah, the hottest portion of the earth is the core. Okay, that's why I'm using color red to represent the core of the earth. Followed by the mantle. That's why I'm using color orange to represent the mantle of the earth. Okay? Uh huh. So there are different. Um, there are different um, regions of the earth, and the outermost part is called the crust. Take note that sometimes the the molten part of the earth might force its way out and cause um, a volcanic eruption. Okay, and sometimes this volcanic eruption might be happening at the sea level. Okay, so the the heated core, the core is always in the in the molten state, and that um that heat is always available. Okay. And truly, it is renewable because the core of the earth will always be at high temperature. Okay, that means geothermal energy option B is the correct answer to question six. Let's move to question seven. Two workers are stacking cans onto a shelf in a shop. The workers lift the same number of identical cans onto the same shelf from the same level. Worker P takes 30 minutes let's take note of that to lift the cans worker q takes sorry worker p takes three minutes to lift the can worker q takes four minutes to lift the cans which statement about the workers is correct worker p develops less useful power than worker q is that correct Worker Q is actually is actually consuming more power. Okay, it consumes water. P consumes more power. Why? Because the time is less. Less. You know, power is a work done divided by time. Worker P develops more useful power than worker Q. Worker P develops more useful power. Yes, that is very likely worker p does less useful work than worker q is that correct no worker p does not do less useful work than worker q the reason is because um we we, we are not told how many joules of energy will be needed okay so we can't um, use them um, work to quantify this the only thing you can consider is is the power okay because we have time we don't have the energy but we have the time so let's just focus on the power okay worker p develops more useful power yes because he's working at a less time that means he's consuming more power that's why he's able to finish the work at a very short period of time so option b is the correct answer to question seven 
Let's go straight to question 8. Question 8 says, which quantities are measured in the same unit? Energy and work are measured in the same unit, but not power. Energy and power, but not work, no? Energy and work, but not power. Correct. Option C is the correct answer to question 8. Let's go straight to question 9. A person in a factory has to lift a box onto a shelf. Which action involves the person doing the least amount of work? When do you do the least amount of work? Let's see. Lifting the box quickly to the high shelf. Going to the high shelf means you are doing more work. Lifting the box slowly to the high shelf. Going to the high shelf also means you are doing more work because the work done is the same thing as the gravitational potential energy and that is equal to mgh. So when the height is high, the gravitational potential energy consumed will be high. Question C. Lifting the box to the low shelf first, then listening to the high. If it, this is the high shelf, let's call it H. Okay. Why this is the low shelf, let's call it smaller than H. Okay. So if you take it to the low shelf, and then you later take it to the high shelf, it means you are still gone the total distance. So there's no difference. No difference has been made. Option D. Lifting the box to the low shelf instead of the high shelf. Correct. The low shelf is at a lower distance, okay? So the gravitational potential energy required will be less. Why? Because the height is smaller. That makes option B the correct answer to the question. Let's move straight to the next question. Question 10. Which is a non-renewable energy resource? Option A, coal. Of course, coal is non-renewable. Solar is enabled, tide is enabled, wind is enabled. So option 10, or number 10, A is the correct option. Question 11. A ball is dropped onto a hard surface and bounces. It does not bounce all the way back to where it started. And so, has not regained all of its original gravitational potential energy. Which statement accounts for the loss of gravitational potential energy? You know, the ball was initially at this position, okay? Then it falls to the ground, it lands, then it bounces back upwards. Now, yes, now when it is bouncing back upwards, it's supposed to attain the original height back, but no, it attains a smaller height, okay, and then returns to the ground, okay? It returns to the ground, hit the ground, and bounces upward again and attain a smaller height, okay? So the process continues on and on and on and on and on. What is causing this reduction in energy? It's due to wasted energy. And wasted energy will be in the form of drag and resistance. Let us see the option we have. Energy was destroyed as the ball hits the ground. Energy cannot be created. Also, energy cannot be destroyed. Option B. Energy was destroyed. Energy can never be destroyed. Option C. The chemical energy and elastic energy of the ball have increased. The ball does not possess any chemical energy. Option D, the internal heat energy of the ball and its surrounding has increased. That is correct because yes, if something is, um, is wasting energy through drag and air resistance, then that will cause the temperature of that thing to increase because the ball itself will be making contact with air molecules, okay? And air molecules will collide with the ball, okay? Therefore, dissipating some energy on the ball. And that energy will be in the form of heat energy. Question 12. Which energy resource is used to boil water to generate electricity? Nuclear fusion. Why? Because hydroelectric does not require heat, okay, does not require boiling water. Tides do not require you boiling water. Also, waves do not require you boiling water. Question 13. Two farmers used an electrically powered elevator to lift bales of hay. All the bales of hay have, have the same mass. As sunset approaches, they increase the speed of the elevator so that more bales are lifted up in a given time. How does this affect, how does this affect the work done in lifting each bale and the useful output 
power of the elevator. You know, um, power is equal to work done divided by time. So when you are increasing, yeah, when you are reducing power, okay, if, if you are reducing time, rather, if you are reducing the denominator, you know the denominator here is time. If you are reducing the denominator, then the value of the fraction would what? The value of the fraction will increase. Okay. For example, 12 over 4. If we reduce the denominator to 3, 12 over 3. Okay. Reduce it further. 12 over 2. Take note that as you are reducing the, the denominator, the value of the fraction begins to reduce. Okay. 12 over 4 will give us 3. 12 over 3 will give us 4. 12 over 2 will give us 6. So as you are reducing the denominator, the value of the fraction begins to increase. Okay? The denominator in this case is, is what? The denominator in this case is time. So when you are reducing time, the value of power will begin to increase. Power goes up. So when you increase speed, you are trying to reduce the time taken, okay? So as you are reducing the time taken, that means you are increasing the power that will be consumed by that machine. So work done in lifting each bill stays the same thing, okay? The work does not increase, the work does not decrease. Why? Because power is not dependent on time. Sorry, work does not depend on time. It is only power that depends on time. So work is not affected by you increasing or reducing the speed, okay? Only power is affected, okay? Good. So as for work, there is no change. But as for power, what happens to power? The power increases. Yes, the power increases. And that makes option D the correct answer. Question 14. A student measures the length of a spring. She then hangs different weights from the spring. She measures the length of the spring for each different weight. The table shows her result. What is the extension of the spring when the weight hung from it is 3 newton? Take note that this length here represents L0. That's the length when the, when the distance moves is 0. Okay, So this is L0. The question requests for the extension of the spring when the weight is 3 newton. At 3 newton, what's the length? 533, right? So extension will be the length at 533 minus length when no load is applied. Okay? So that will be 533 minus 20. Sorry, 533 minus 520. And if you do 533 minus 520, if you do 533 minus 520, you will get you get 13. Yes, you get 13 millimeter as your answer, which is option D. Now we are going straight to question 15. Question 13. Which energy resource is used to generate electricity without using any moving parts? Geothermal? No. Hydroelectric? No. Nuclear? No. Solar energy? Correct. Solar energy just requires the solar panel. Question 16. Which source of energy involves splitting of heavy atoms? Okay, when you are splitting heavy atoms, that is um, nuclear energy. Okay, it takes place in the nucleus of the atom. Number 17. A cyclist travels down a hill from rest at point X without pedaling. The cyclist applies his brakes and the cycle stops at point Y. Which energy changes have taken place between X and Y? You know, at X, the cyclist is at a, at a certain height above ground level. At a certain height H, okay? Good. At Y, Y is ground level, okay? Y is ground level. So, at X is possesses gravitational potential energy because it's above the ground. 
okay and while it's moving the form of energy it possesses would be kinetic energy okay because it's in motion and here when it eventually stops moving what happened the the kinetic energy ha, has been converted to heat due to friction that is how brakes work when you apply the brakes on your car okay friction will be produced and that friction will produce heat energy okay good so that means option a is the correct answer so question number 17 let's go to question 18 question 80 says to calculate the power produced by force the size of the force must be known what else needs to be known to calculate the power you know the formula for power is work done divided by time right or you say energy divided by time now take note that work done itself is force times distance so you can say power is equal to force times distance divided by time so once you know the once you know the force what else do you need to know you need to know the distance over time all right let's go so to calculate the power produced the size of the force must be known what else needs to be known to calculate the power the distance moved so the distance the force moves okay the distance the force moves the object that's correct okay also the time for which the force acts on the object that's correct so that is option a okay because you need to know the force you need to know the distance and you also need to know the time that means option a is correct okay good question 19 which form of energy is used to generate electrical energy in a tidal power station you know the tidal power station it, it works based on on the advantage of um, tide yeah and uh, let's assume this is um, the normal water level okay so we create a barrier let me use them um, the color blue to represent the barrier so we create a barrier at a point like this okay yeah this is the ocean okay or you say the sea and the, the, we create a barrier here okay so this becomes our own dam okay let me use another color let me use the color black to represent our dam so this represents our own dam okay and then we create an outlet here so um yes so when the water comes out from here it will be driving the motor here to generate electricity but when the tide when the tide now um when the tide appears that means um when the tide tide is high the water level will now rise to a higher value okay that's this value and when the water level rises to this value what happens water will, will will fill up this dam okay take note that this is the dam water will fill up this dam now when the the tide when the level of the tide when it now goes down what happened the water level will now will no longer be here it will go back down but as the water level goes down the water in the in the dam remains high because of the barrier that stops it from going so the tide has helped us to store water in the dam okay good so which form of energy is used to generate electrical energy the form of energy used to generate electrical energy is gravitational energy okay that's gravitational potential energy yes because the water level in the dam is now at a certain height above ground level and that's gravitational potential energy question 20 says four different model steam engines each lifts a 1.0 kilogram object from the same laboratory floor to the same laboratory branch which engine takes a different time to lift the object also how does the most powerful engine 
compare with the other engines. Now look at it. Option A, speed of lifting objects into the bench is faster, okay, um, and useful, more useful work done, more than the other engines. The question says, how does the most powerful engine, so if it is the most powerful engine, then it will be faster, okay? Why? Because power is equal to work done over time. So if the power is high, that means work done is high and the time is low. And for times to be low, that means it's faster, okay? So it's faster and it's doing more work. So it is faster, then useful work done more than the other engines. Option B, is faster than same as the other engines. Um, option C is slower, then the work will be less than other engine. Option D is slower, same as the other engine. Take note that the, the mass is one kilogram. So the mass does not change, okay? Okay, and, and the work done, or you say the energy is equal to mgh. The mass does not change, Gravity is constant and the height does not change. That simply means the energy or the work done remains the same. Okay, that means option B is correct. Okay, because though the machine is faster, but the work done is the same. That means option B is the correct answer to this question. Let's go to the next one. Question 21. Question 21 says, what needs to be known to calculate the work done by a force acting on an object? You know, the formula for work done is the force multiplied by the distance, right? Good. We don't have anything to do with the time. So option A says the size of the force, then the distance the force moves the object. That is option A. And okay, it also talks about time. No, we don't need that. Um, option B says the force and the distance. So option B means it talks about force and distance. That's the correct answer, okay, because you don't need the time. So we go straight to question 21, 22. The electrical energy may be obtained from nuclear fission. In what order is energy transferred in this process? Okay, so for you to obtain electrical energy in nuclear fission, in what order is energy transferred? Okay, in the process of nuclear fission. Now, option A, we have um, nuclear fuel. From nuclear fuel, the energy goes to the generator, and then from generator to the reactor. No, 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 no. Option B, the nuclear fuel. Energy in nuclear fuel goes to generator. No, that's not correct. Option C, nuclear fuel from nuclear fuel to the fuel to the reactor and boiler. Yes, and from reactor and boiler to generator and to turbine. No. Option D, from nuclear fuel to the reactor and boiler, and from reactor and boiler to the turbines, and then from the turbines to the generator. That is the correct answer, and that is how. Um, nuclear energy works okay so nuclear from the nuclear fuel so energy from nuclear fuel goes to the reactor and boiler so it is the reactor and boiler um it is the reactor and boiler that will be used to to boil water okay so water has now been boiled and the water is at a high temperature and pressure okay high temperature and pressure and that is steam. That steam will be used to drive the steam turbine. Okay, so from the reactor and boiler to the turbine. Okay, so you drive the steam turbine. Okay, and that steam turbine is co is connected to the generator. Okay, good. So that means option D is the correct answer. Twenty three. Question twenty three says. A car is stationary 
at the top of a hill with the engine switched off. The brakes are released and the car rolls down the hill. At what labeled point does the car have the greatest kinetic energy? You have to ignore friction. Okay, so at this point, at the top of the hill, it has only gravitational potential energy. Okay, midpoint, it has both gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. But at the bottom of the hill, it has only kinetic energy. Okay, take note that at the bottom of the hill, all the gravitational potential energy at the top must have been converted to kinetic energy at the bottom. Hence, the kinetic energy at the bottom is highest okay is maximum so that is um, option c as the correct answer to our question 23 okay because that is where we have the greatest kinetic energy so you just shade option c so we go straight to the next question you shade option c question 24 which role gives the energy changes in a battery and the energy changes in a solar cell? Okay. A battery converts a battery converts chemical energy to electrical energy, while a solar cell converts solar energy, okay, to electrical energy. Okay. Take note that solar energy is also called light energy. So that means Option B is the correct answer. Yes, option B, that's when chemical energy is converted to electrical and light is converted to electrical energy. Question 25. A helicopter takes up from the ground and rises vertically. It then hovers at constant height above the ground. Which sequence of energy changes takes place during the gain in height? You know, um, the helicopter they lay as on this helicopter. So the helicopter initially at rest. So what form of energy does the helicopter possess at this point? It's just the energy stored in the fuel. The energy stored in the fuel, and that is chemical energy. Okay? So initially it has chemical energy. Now, the blades of the helicopter begins to rotate. And as the, as the blade begins to rotate, what happens? The helicopter takes off. Okay, it lifts, it goes upward. Okay, so let's assume, let's assume this is the helicopter, this is the blade. Now, when the helicopter takes off, what happens? Once it takes off, it is at a certain height above the ground level. It now has this height H above ground level. That means at this height, it possesses one form of energy. It possesses gravitational potential energy. It's clear, right? Good. But before the airplane goes upward, take note that the chemical energy in the fuel, the chemical energy in the fuel will be used to make the blades rotate, right? Good. It is the rotation of the blade that now leads to it going upwards. Okay, so let's focus on the chemical energy making the blade rotate. When chemical energy makes the blade rotate, then the rotating blade possesses kinetic energy. So the order is that chemical energy in the fuel will be converted to kinetic energy, which is the rotation of the blade. Why that rotation of the blade will cause it to lift and give it the gravitational potential energy. So from this, we see that the correct answer to question 25 is B, because chemical energy will be converted to kinetic energy, and the kinetic energy will eventually be converted to gravitational potential energy. Let's go straight to question 26. Question 26 says, four people of equal weight on a bench use different routes to get to the top of a sea wall. Which person produces the greatest average power? Option A, runs across the bench, then climbs the ladder. Option B, walks across the bench, then climbs the ladder. Okay, we have the time taken for each. 
Option C runs up the slippery way and it takes five seconds. Option D walks up the slippery way, slippery walks up the slipway and then takes 10 seconds. Well, the correct answer to that is the one with the smallest time taken. Why? Because um, the work that is being done in this case is being done against gravity. That's in going upward. That's the direction in which work is being done against gravity. Okay? So we are focusing only on the vertical distance, which is the height. And for all of them, they are all covering this vertical distance. Okay? They are all moving against gravity. Whether you walk this way before climbing upward, okay, or you just go straight before you, both cases you arrive at the top here, okay. So we are not going to focus on the route you take. We are only going to focus on the time taken. Now let's focus on the time taken. Which one has the smallest time taken? C has the smallest time taken. Hence, this is it is C that uses more power, okay. The greatest power is produced by C because that's when we have lowest time. Take note that power is energy divided by time. Hence, for power to be high, the time must be low. When time is low, then the power is high. And when time is high, then the power is low. And it's it's reasonable in real life setting. Okay, when you are trying to spend less time in doing a work. Then you are spending more power. For example, if you want to walk from your house to school, if you are spending less time in going from your house to school, that means you run from your house to school, and that will consume much power. Okay, power is high. Okay, good. So when you are spending less time, that means you are consuming much power. Question 27 says: which energy transfer takes place when a matchstick burns? When the matchstick burns, what happens? It is the chemical energy in the matchstick that is converted to heat energy. Okay, good. So that is option A. Chemical energy is converted to thermal energy. Okay, that's why I listed, I named this um, material the conservation of energy. How energy is being transferred from one form, how energy is being transferred, yes, from one point to another, and how energy is being converted. From one form to another. Question 28. Four cars are driven along a road. The table shows the work done by the engine in each car and the time taken by each car. Which engine produces the most power? Okay, the engine that produces the most power is the one that uses the that used the greatest work, okay, the highest work and the lowest time. Why? Because power is equal to work divided by time. So you just divide work by time in each case. 50,000 divided by 20, that will give you 2,500 watts. Okay? The second one, 50,000 divided by 40 will give you 1,250 watts. Question C. Option C. 100,000 divided by 20 will give you 5,000 watts. Option D. 100,000 divided by 40 will give you 2,500 watts. So which one produces the highest power? Option C. Okay, that's it. So you can see the work is high and the time is low. That is the one that produces the highest power, option C. Number 29. In a hydroelectric power station, one form of energy is stored in a lake or reservoir. This energy is then transferred in stages to another useful form. Which is the output? Which law gives the name of the stored energy and the name of the output energy? You know, when you talk of hydroelectric energy, we say energy that is stored in a dam. So we have a dam that contains water, okay? The dam is at a certain height above ground level. So there will be an outlet for water to come out. 
So when that water comes out, the water will drive a turbine, okay? The, the turbine will have um, veins that are connected to a shaft, okay? So as this turbine rotates, it will make a generator that is um, a coil that is placed in a magnetic field. So we have um, a coil, okay? We have a coil, and that coil is in a magnetic field. The coil will begin to rotate in the magnetic field. The rotation of the coil produces electricity. It produces electrical energy. So, which hole gives the name of the energy that is stored and the name of output? The output is electric energy. Why the energy that is stored is energy due to the height of the dam, of the water, the height of the water above the ground. And energy due to height, energy due to the position is called gravitational potential energy. That's how option C is the correct answer, okay? It is in option C where we have gravitational energy as the first energy and electrical energy as the output energy. Let's go to question 30. A certain machine is very efficient. What does this mean? For an engine to be much to be efficient, it means it produces large amounts of power. No, it uses very little energy. No, it wastes very little energy. Good, that is what we mean when we talk about efficiency. For energy for an engine to be efficient, it means it wastes very little amounts of energy. That's understood, right? Yes, very good. So thank you very much for listening. This brings us to the end of the lesson. We'll continue in the next video. Thank you.